Welcome to today's ERP support training session, focusing on pay types to support various worker pay. Pay types is a setting within the labor module of EBMS. EBMS gives a user a lot of flexibility to configure the type of pay used to reimburse workers. Pay is often based on an hourly rate, but the pay type setting can multiply the hourly pay by 150% for overtime pay or by 200% for after hours pay, etc. Benefits pay, pay such as vacation, sick, personal can be limited based on the amount of hours accrued by the worker. The options to accumulate hours or rollover hours from one year to the next are all set within the pay type settings of each benefit pay type. Pay types can be based on a dollar commission. They can be salary, tips, reimbursements, piecework, as well as various hourly pay types. Pay types are used to identify the type of pay added to a time card and the type of pay listed on the worker's history pay stub. Pay types can be entered within the worker's pay tab before a pay type can be used within the worker's time card. This ability to create and configure pay types based on the needs of the company gives the user maximum flexibility within the labor module of EBMS. So let's take a look at the pay type setting within EBMS. We access this by selecting labor options from the main labor menu and selecting the pay type tab as seen on the screen. Most payroll systems have these pay types fixed within the system. The benefit of having the flexibility that EBMS offers is that the pay types can be tailored for those unique situations that require either a specific pay type label or a specific pay type uh, process. So within the pay types tab, you will see three columns. The description, which is the label that will show up on the employee's pay stub, uh, either a payment voucher for direct deposit or an actual paycheck stub if you're printing paychecks. The second column is the base. Now, EBMS allows you to have pay types that are based on hourly, which is common. You can have it based on a dollar, which would be a rather than per hour, it is uh, you enter in a flat dollar amount, or it can be unit based, which is similar to hours, but it's a quantity other than the hours the employee worked. There's a third column called the type. Now, the standard type is, is the uh, hourly, the, uh, when we pay somebody based on an hourly wage. But there's a number of other types in this list. I can have a benefit type. Now that would be hourly pay, but it's benefit pay rather than actual work pay. So for example, vacation, or holiday, or sick, or personal pay would all be considered benefit pay. We then have a third type, which would be a salary. Uh, and EBMS allows the user to configure various salary configurations. We then have the benefit salary, which would be benefit pay, meaning like hour, vacation, etc., for a salaried worker where the, that benefit pay is included in the sal uh, salary, total salary pay. We then have piecework options, we have reimbursements, and then we have a couple tip uh, based pay. All of these types. Uh, configured with the base can be used to create a wide variety of pay types. Now the reason for covering this pay type subject 
is to give you an idea of the flexibility that's involved in the back end of EBMS. The goal of this session is not to explain the technical details of what all you can do in the labor module, but it is to give you an overview since uh, the most common pay types are used by majority of our users. The common pay types of hourly pay, salary pay, maybe some commission and bonus uh, with some benefit pay is very common. What is less common is configuring EBMS for some unique pay types that may include uh, piecework, may include some uh, unique requirements for the industry or the state, or may require just some changes, some, some uh, legal changes to meet the requirement, the payroll requirements of that area. So a first, the first thing a person must do to create, uh, to use a pay type in EBMS is to create that pay type in this pay types tab as shown on the screen. Now, like I said, a lot of pay types are already included when it's shipped with EBMS, but there are many more variations of these pay types that are available. The second thing that needs to happen to use a specific pay type in EBMS is to set up that pay type within the employee's pay tab. Now, I can set up these pay rates for individual workers. I do that by clicking on the pay uh, tab and then adding the new rates in this list. Now, obviously, uh, EBMS gives you the ability to set up defaults, which allows me to preset up these pay rates for a group of workers. That way, if I am generating dozens or even hundreds of worker records, I don't have to configure these pay types individually. But again, it is important that I set up these pay types uh, that contain the pay rates within the pay tab of every worker before I use EBMS to collect the labor, to collect the uh, labor data, or to process payroll. So on the screen, I have an employee and I have four different pay types. Now, the one is a regular, what I call a regular pay type. This is uh, a standard type of, uh, this is a standard type, which is an hourly based rate. And this is what I would normally use to pay the employee. I then have a second hourly pay type called overtime. Overtime is set up so that it's multiplied by 50% to give them time and a half. I then have two benefit pays. One is for holiday, the other is for vacation. Now, by uh, allowing the user to set up these pay types, if there is maybe sick time or other type of benefit pay that differs from the vacation or holiday, the user could adjust those. The key is, is that the pay type label will show up on the employee's pay stub. Some states have specific requirements of the type of pay and how you label the different types of pay. When I add a new rate, I give it, I select the pay type from my pay type list which we just looked at back in options. And then I set a rate formula. Now, like I said before, the regular would be equal to, that means I'm equal, making it equal the employee's hourly rate. So in this case, on the pay tab, I have an hourly pay of $14. I set that within the pay tab. I then create a pay rate uh, in this case, overtime, I'm going to add 50% on top of my hourly pay, which is then going to give me a rate of $21 for all overtime pay. Now, I set the 
uh, benefit pay very similar. So you'll see the rate formula is equal to. So again, for this employee, it would be equal to the pay rate that I put in the pay tab. Now, whenever I select a benefit pay type, I have a number of additional options. Now, th these options are to manage benefit pay. Usually, benefit pay uh, has some type of limitation. So, for example, vacation. Uh, I may give an employee a certain amount of vacation each year that they worked. Uh, and so I can reset their vacation days at the beginning of the calendar year. I can do it at the beginning of their anniversary year, meaning the, the anniversary of when they were hired, uh, or I can manually do it. And so the increment options allows me to set how or when I increment or increase these hours. The hours available at the bottom then are collected throughout the, the, uh, the employment of the worker. So it is possible to have hours roll over from the year before. So if I did not use all my vacation pay, some employers will roll that over from last year to the current year. Uh, some employers do not. EBMS allows you to do it either way. So if I uh, roll over the hours from the previous year, I would then add the amount of hours that I am uh, including in this employee's vacation package, and it gives me a total hours available. I can then tr uh, track in this record how much vacation I actually use throughout that, that uh, calendar year and compare and, and actually show how much is available. In fact, the system has the option to show on the employee's pay stub exactly how many benefit hours are available for this employee at this time. Like I said, you can increase this on a calendar year, you can increase this on the anniversary year, meaning when the uh, worker was, was hired, or you can in increase it each time card. There's a third, I'm sorry, a fourth, uh, even newer feature that allows you to calculate it based on history. So, for example, on the screen, and this is set within labor, labor options, benefits. So in this case, I have a pay type called sick. And for every hour that this employee works, he, he accumulates a 0 0.0333 rate of sick pay. So what happens in this case is that the available benefit hours, in this case of sick pay, is calculated on each pay period. So uh, if I had 500 hours already uh, worked at this uh, company, it would take that 500 hours times 0 0.0333 and calculate the available sick pay. Now, I, I have it for just one uh, benefit pay, sick pay, but you could do this for as many different benefit pays as you want. I also have the ability to set. Although I'm calculating it in real time, I have a maximum for the year, so I can't go beyond 24 hours, and I also have a maximum total. Like I said, we have the option to roll it over from year to year if you want. In this case, there, uh, that would not happen because I could not have more than 24 each year. Like I mentioned before, it is important to label these pay types properly. The, the labels are what's going to show up on the employee's pay stubs. And especially some larger companies, uh, they're going to want the format of their pay stub very precise. 
So in this case, we have three pay types, regular, overtime, and vacation. And we have the amount of hours for the current paycheck. We also have the year to date uh, pay, both regular, overtime, and vacation. So, so as you can tell, setting pay types within the worker record is very important to configure the payroll system or just the labor management system if you're using third party uh, to have it uh, formatted properly. Now, we mentioned that you don't necessarily need to set these up individually, especially if you have dozens or hundreds of, of workers. So as you'll see on the screen, we have four different folders. So the hardware department, uh, this, this set of employees, this set of workers, uh, is normally paid by the hour. So as you can tell, the pay type list, the pay rates, have five different options. I have a bonus option, which I may or may not use. Just because a pay type is listed in the eight workers record doesn't mean I need to use it. But the benefit is that it's there. And uh, as soon as it's used, then it will show up on their stuff. So I have bonus, I have holiday, I have vacation, which, is, uh, which are benefit pay, and then I have regular and overtime. Now, by setting up these pay rates, these pay types, I can configure it for the entire hardware department, which means as soon as I add a new worker to that uh, worker category, they will assume at a different worker category. We're gonna look at the folder group for the officers, uh, or in this case, managers. The officers are being paid on a salary rather than an hourly basis. And as you can see on the pay tab of this uh, one of the officers, or I can set this up for the entire group as well, but I have a salary pay type. I have a bonus if I wanna add something to their salary. I then have a salary dash holiday, a salary dash vacation, which allows me to track benefit hours or how much uh, vacation or holiday uh, they were paid for included in their salary. I then have a fifth pay type here, which is personal. Now this personal is set differently than the other benefit pay. Instead of it being a salary benefit, it is more of a standard benefit. Now, whenever I use a benefit pay with a salary pay uh, worker, the system will add to their salary the additional personal pay. So uh, it is possible to have a salary pay where he gets paid a salary amount and yet I track the benefit, uh, the different types of benefit pay or I can set up the benefit pay in a way that it actually adds to his total salary pay. There's also two different types of salary pays that I could set. The system normally comes through with the salary pay type set as a hour base. Now what this does is this gives you, in this case, $1,400 a pay period. And when I pay that employee, no matter how many hours he puts in his time card, it'll pay him that amount of salary. That's because it's going to evaluate or, or um, summarize his pay based on a weekly or bi-weekly pay period pay. If, for some reason, I want to pay a different type of salary, I may want to pay this employee a daily salary rather than a fixed salary per pay period, which is most common. But if I want a daily salary, I want to give this worker pay based on the day or based on a dollar amount. So I can set up a new type of salary pay 
and mark it as dollar-based. When it's dollar-based, now I can manipulate the employ the worker's salary pay from one pay period to another. Like we had said before, depending on how the benefit pay is set up for these salary workers, it will include this uh, this vacation or holiday pay in their regular salary, meaning that they get a fixed salary amount every pay period, which is most common. Uh, or I can have a benefit pay that adds to their salary amount. So it's important that this is configured properly. So first of all, the salary can be a fixed amount per pay period, or it can be adjusted uh, based on a dollar figure. With the benefit pay, it can just include that in their total salary, or it can add it to their pay. Now, one of the benefits of having a separate pay type for their holiday and vacation is that my costs uh, are allocated based on those benefits. And so vacation pay would go under the vacation pay costs versus the general payroll. Just like we did with hourly pay, it is important that we have clear labels and that we then set the defaults. In this case, you will see the defaults under the officers uh, so that the all the officers are paid using the salary pay type. Now, worker categories can be used in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's just that it can save a certain amount of time if you do create categories that are consistent with the pay type groups that are used to being used. So let's go into a third type of worker. And in this case, I'm setting up pay rates and pay types for piecework workers. Now I used a uh, pay type list on the screen that we used for a piecework payroll company in the state of California. And the state of California had some real specific requirements for this company. And so uh, the attorney needed to approve the pay stub. They needed to have certain pay types uh, and they had to have uh, some unique pay types uh, to meet the requirements, the labor requirements of California. Now, the benefit was that because EBMS allowed these flexible pay types, we could meet these needs without a lot of complexity. I can, first of all, label pay types the way I want to using the pay type tab, and I can add certain pay types uh, for specific reasons. Let me just show you some of them on the screen. So you notice in this pay type list that I have a piecework and I'm a piecework OT or overtime. So since this was a piecework uh, employer, I needed to have a piecework pay type. This is how I would pay the guys uh, for the piecework they did. Now on top of this piecework rate, I needed to have an hourly rate, not a, not a unit based, but an hour based standard pay for non-productive time. In the state of California, it is required that if a employee waits uh, and does not have the materials to continue working, that that employee is paid by the hour for that waiting time. It's called non-productive time. So we created a new pay type called non-productive. It is hourly based, it is standard. It is an hourly based uh, pay. There's a third, uh, uh, another pay type in this list that's a little bit unique, and that is what we call rest break. So in, in this case, uh, these piecework employees needed to be paid for their rest or their break time uh, using an hourly rate. And so uh, we again created another pay type called rest break. It's hourly based. It's based on an hourly rate rather than on piecework rate. And it's added to their piecework pay for each pay period. Now, there's a couple others on this list 
that would be unique that are also considered piecework type rates. For example, flag rates. This is where a employee is based on the quoted time, uh, the hourly rate, which is a quoted time uh, in EBMS rather than the actual time it took. Now, since he is being paid for uh, the quantity of hours that's different from the actual hours, EBMS treats it as piecework. We have uh, all piecework pay is paid based on uh, a fixed rate or a, uh, a quantity or a dollar uh, figure rather than an hourly rate hooked to the, the actual amount that they spent. So flag rates are common in the automotive industry. That is where I pay a guy five hours to do this installation because that's the estimated amount of time. I take the five hours times his hourly rate, but although it is, um, it is based on hours, it may take him seven hours, it may take him four hours to do that, that uh, five hour allotted task. And since it isn't the actual time, we treat it as piecework and handled accordingly. EBMS uh, takes care of the complexity of making sure that the pay for this flag rate is done properly. Now you'll notice that there's a number of benefit pay. We have holiday, we have double, we have personal, we have um, sick, and so you can have multiple benefit pays. Some you may use, some you may not. Some may be used by just a few of your employees. Uh, either way, set the pay types up to match what you need. Now, I would not recommend that you just delete all the pay types that you're not initially using when you start EBMS. But I do recommend that if there are certain pay types that you will never use, that you get rid of them. And if there's pay types that you need that are not included in the system, then obviously it's important to create those pay types when you set up EBMS. Like we said before, it's important to have clear labels. Make sure that the labels that you use that are gonna show up on the workers' vouchers or pay stubs uh, match or meet the needs, the requirements of the accounting system or the payroll department. Uh, if you set this up in defaults, you can again save a lot of time by just duplicating these pay types for the various employees. After we have the pay types set up uh, in options and have them configured within each worker's record, then we'll go into the time card and actually enter the regular pay, the piecework pay, the commission pay, the salary pay based on what the employee is being paid. EBMS has a growing number of time clocks. Now, often time clocks are used to allocate different work codes, but EBMS now has the capability of even doing piecework uh, entry, entering in the number of units of piecework using a time clock if desired. One of the powerful tools within EBMS is the ability to create or change the pay type based on the overtime utility. Not only does EBMS calculate overtime for hourly employees, but it also does it for piecework employees. Now, the utility allows me to calculate overtime daily, which means that I can calculate uh, any hour over the eight hours, which is typical, um, any hour over the eight hour per day would be overtime. Uh, obviously, if I am working over 40 hours, it is always overtime. So I can either do it on a daily basis, on an eight hour day, or I can do it strictly on a 40 hour week. And this utility will work uh, for weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, even other payroll intervals. Now, the system also has the capability of doing overtime pay for piecework. 
Uh, this is very complex, but it, it, it works well within EBMS. And again, I have a pay type for piecework. I have a pay type called piecework OT, which basically increases the piecework rate by 50%. So uh, more and more states are requiring that overtime pay is included for all piecework pay. Now, in the case of the overhead utility, this can be run from the time card screen, but the most common is using the process button under worker payments. If I click under process and click overtime, I can now calculate the overtime of all the time cards within this particular pay period using one option. Now, the fourth way to add these pay types to a time card without having to manually add them, and obviously the most common, would be to manually add a bonus or manually add a, a, a holiday or a vacation. But there is another way of doing it, and that is to add a script to the process button of the worker payment screen as, as seen on the screen now, what this can do is insert certain records, certain lines uh, based on a criteria, and it allows me to create uh, dozens or hundreds of time card detail lines using this particular pay type. So rather than manually creating something, if I have many, many time cards, I can do it using this process. So like I mentioned before, um, we added a pay type called non-productive time. We also added a pay type called rest break. And rather than doing that manually, we created a script that inserted these pay types based on the criteria that the uh, user had for these particular pay requirements. One of the interesting things about EBMS is that I can have a mixture of pay types on the same time card. So let's say I have a weekly payroll. I could have an employee that worked an hourly rate for the first half of the week, did piecework rate at the last half of the week, may even have had some commission pay included, and may have some other uh, pay types that we didn't even mention yet uh, called reimbursement. But the benefit is that I can take all these pay types together, combine them, and have a payroll that pays all these pay types in a single time card. And the system will do it in a way that meets the labor requirements or the payroll requirements of most companies. Now let me just touch on a few uh, pay types that I did not touch on yet. Uh, some of these are, are not used a lot, and so it's good for you to be aware that they are available. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna highlight on reimbursements. Now, reimbursement is a type, a pay type type, as we saw before. Reimbursements are usually dollar-based, and what it is, is it's when I am including in an employee's paycheck non-payroll pay. So this reimbursement, uh, maybe I'm reimbursing in for mileage or, or maybe uh, something, some other costs that he incurred that I'm reimbursing him for, and I want to pay him back without inflating his pay. So reimbursement is when I am paying an employee, a worker, uh, without increasing his gross payroll. So the benefit here is I can add it to the time card, it can increase his paycheck, and it can ignore that reimbursement when I'm calculating uh, federal or state taxes. Tips. Tips is something that is probably not used by many clients, but the system has all the tools to handle this. So if a person is uh, given tips, uh, say cash tips like a restaurant, uh, they need to record it and they can record it in EBMS where we record this income. It actually takes it off their paycheck. So let's say I had $200 of tips for this pay period. 
I would not pay the employee for the $200 because they already have it. They it was take home tips, but I have to increase the total pay by $200 so that all my taxes are properly calculated. Now there's two different types of tips that EBMS handles. One is take home tips, which is uh, those tips that I take home as cash. Uh, and then we have employer paid tips, which would be the tips that we have recorded uh, that the employer is paying me, but it's part of my paycheck. It is actually included in the gross pay of that paycheck. There's a third type of pay. Now this is a little different than some pay, uh, pay types because I don't actually create a makeup pay type in options. This is built into EBMS. Now makeup pay is whenever I am paying an employee in a non-hourly fashion. So I am paying the employee uh, a, a pay, but I have to make sure that the pay, the total pay, equals or exceeds minimum wage. If the pay that I'm giving this employee for the piecework he did and the hours that I recorded that he spent doing it does not uh, make, does not match minimum wage, then the system will add pay to his paycheck to make him uh, make it so that he makes minimum wage. This shows at the footer of the time card entry. It's called makeup pay. Uh, this is basically a dollar figure that is given to the employees to make sure that they match minimum wage. These pay types are uh, highlighted in EBMS. And there's a number of categories. There is under the labor documentation, under getting started, there's a pay types tab that shows you how to set up the options. If you go under workers, under the pay tab, it shows you how to set up pay types for each worker. And then uh, it does, under the processing payroll, it has various different types of pay. Now the goal today is to give you an overview of what all you can do. Because there, is, there are users who want to do something you, a bit unique, expecting it to be complicated. But with this flexible pay type uh, tool in EBMS, it gives the user the ability to do uh, something even somewhat complex just by changing settings. So let's summarize today's session. EBMS has and includes pay types to manage hourly workers. This would be their regular hourly pay, overtime pay, uh, possibly double pay if you pay extra for holidays or after hours. Uh, EBMS includes the pay types for salary workers, and that includes both uh, a fixed salary pay per pay period, which is most common, or one that's daily based. It allows you to include benefit pay, uh, or it, you can add pay such as, as some benefit pay or bonus pay on top of their salary. The system has all the tools to manage piecework payroll. And this would include uh, piecework pay. It includes the overtime complexities of piecework pay. Uh, it, in, it includes uh, benefit pay or, or even uh, hourly pay mixed with piecework pay. Uh, it in, includes things like bonus or commissions. And then not only do we handle hourly salary and piecework, but it, uh, EBMS handles a variety of other pay types, including flag pay, salary by a day, commission, tips, and others. That concludes this training session.